Hello, you are listening to Disney Travel Tales, episode number 16. This is a space where you can escape the real world and immerse yourself in someone's recent Disney trip. I'm Jenny, and today we are talking to Eve about her surprise trip to Disneyland. Eve and her husband, Sean, took their family to Disneyland without ever telling their kids where they were going. This is such a fun episode. As always, this show is sponsored by Trolley Lane Travel. If you are thinking about traveling to any Disney resort or even taking a Disney cruise, then having a travel agent will not only save you time, but also money. With all the exciting things going on at the parks right now, there really is not a better time to visit. Owner Becky and her agents are experts at Disney travel. Visit them at trolleylanetravel.com and go to their request a quote page for a free no obligation quote. You can also visit them on Instagram and Facebook at Trolley Lane Travel LLC. Becky will be at the parks this week celebrating the 50th anniversary. She's going to be doing some special live broadcasts, so make sure to check their Facebook page. If you book a vacation with them and want to be on the show, let your agent know. This is how I get my guests. Also, if you're enjoying the show and want to help support it, there are two super easy ways to do it. The first one is leaving a positive review on Apple Podcasts, and the second one is sharing it with a friend. Okay, so let's get going. Imagine yourself seeing Sleeping Beauty Castle for the first time, and let's go. Thanks for coming back on the show to talk about your special surprise Disneyland trip that y'all took with your kids. I'm so excited to be back and talk about our first visit to Disneyland. We had the best time, so I can't wait to share. So when did y'all go? Um, We went over Labor Day weekend. And this was a surprise trip because my kids, I have four kids, and they said, next time we go to Disney, will you surprise us? We did that several years ago, going on a cruise, and they love that. And we've never been to Disneyland. We thought, my oldest is in high school band. It's a crazy schedule. They're like, don't go anywhere. But we had this little tiny window over Labor Day weekend. And so we thought, we're going to take advantage of that. And we scheduled it couple months ago, not too far out though. This was the closest to the trip that we had ever scheduled one. And Becky was awesome. And she got us hooked up. And then lo and behold, my oldest was back at school for four days and he was vaccinated and masked and he got COVID. And we were really worried that it was going to back up to that trip. Nobody else got sick and it all just kind of worked out. So it was a very hard time as it is for so many people But knowing we had this surprise right around the corner was just so uplifting to us. And so we told the kids, we didn't tell them anything. We told our oldest on the Thursday before we left on Friday that after he got home from the football game at like midnight on Friday night, he needed to go right to bed and he needed to just plan on taking his homework because we were going somewhere. You know, when you miss 10 days of high school, you have a ton of makeup work. And we wanted to give him a little bit of heads up that he wasn't just going to have a three-day weekend to sit and work at home. And so he was like, okay, where are we going? Disney World? And we were like, nope. (laughs) And he kept asking, and I was like, nope, even though I'm like the world's worst liar. And we didn't tell the other kids. And so on Friday, I packed all their suitcases up. It was just a really quick trip. So you hardly, you know, you needed some shorts and sneakers and t-shirts and our Disney ears. And I, it was so fun packing up just a cup for the six of us. I think we had four small suitcases that we were going to carry on. And then in the morning, <clears throat> our flight was at, I think, nine out of Austin. So we woke them up about 630 And it was so awesome because they were asleep and we shook them and we said, Hey, you need to wake up and go pack your travel backpack. And they, all of them were like, what? 
And we're like, just go get your travel backpack. We're going to the airport right now. And they were like, what? And that alone was just fun. So we get to the airport and they're guessing the whole time. And we're just like, nope, nope. We're not going to tell you. That's a great guess. We're not going to tell you. And our first flight was actually to Las Vegas. So they, we had been to Yellowstone this summer and they were like, oh, we're going to another national park. That's awesome. And so we get to Vegas and then our youngest, who's four, you know, he thought we were there because there's all the casino stuff in Vegas. And he's like, oh, this is so cool. And we're like, nope. And they start, you know, figuring out the time and where we're going. And it said, you know, Orange County or Denver. And so we still didn't tell them. They're kind of guessing, you know. But then we finally got on that flight to Orange County. And they were guessing, but they weren't sure. Even They even had, like, Google Maps up on my oldest phone. And they were watching us in the shuttle from the hotel, you know. And they are like, okay, I think we're going here because the nice thing about Orange County is only like 15, 20 minutes from the park. And we stayed at the Fairfield in Marriott right across from the park, which was one of my favorite things <laughs> just to do that. And so we pull up and then you see the big, you know, Disney signs and they all got so excited. I actually took a video of it and they were just ecstatic. Um, and so by the time we got there to our room, it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. Unfortunately, you know, I wish there had been a direct flight and we could have popped over there and got there earlier, but it all worked out great. We hopped up to our room, we threw on our Disney shirts, grabbed our ears, and we were out the door like within 30 minutes. And then we walked down the street. It was probably about two blocks down the street. Um, and you just walk right in the front gates, which was such a different experience than riding the bus, the Skyliner, and the other transportation. And we loved it. It was just easy, you know? It's so and convenient. Just, it was so convenient. And that was a huge plus. Um, you can take your own waters in. It was very warm. And we ended up renting one of the little Disney strollers for our four-year-old. But you know what? We walked up to the gates and there were no lines, like zero lines. And this was on a Saturday afternoon. And so we went in and it had all the wonderful Halloween decorations. You know, the gates were awesome with the big pumpkins. And we just instantly were in that magical spirit. That's so fun. So it what was were really your like? They were so happy. Aw, that's so exciting. So y'all are big Disney World fans and travelers. What was your like initial impression walking into Disneyland? That it was so easy. Yeah. You know, you were used to standing and waiting and going in the long lines, which are so worth it. But to just walk up there and be like, oh, we can literally just walk up to the gate and go in. And it's not even that crowded. Um, it just felt really easy and convenient. And that's a plus when you're traveling with your family. Yeah, especially when you're on a short trip and your time is limited. Right. We did feel a little rushed. We ended up having all that day at the park. So we got there about three and we are Star Wars buffs. So we just jetted straight back to the Galaxy's Edge, which looks just like Disney World. Um and we went back there and we rode the Millennium Falcon. And the line was so much shorter than when we had experienced it at Disney World. Um, I, let's see. It said, I kept a note of all the times. It said it was a 30-minute wait, and it actually was a 30-minute wait. All the, I think almost all the other ones were shorter than the wait time. Um, but our youngest was just over 40 inches. So it was his first time riding the Millennium Falcon. And he thought that was incredible. He actually said that was his favorite ride of the whole Aww, time. That's so cute. So is this yeah. in California Adventure or Disneyland Park? This was at Disneyland. Okay. So when you walk, what's really cool too is because when you walk up, and I didn't even know this, there are two parks, but they're basically just separated by almost like ticket styles and a little open space in the middle. So if you have a park hopper, you can just, you know, do this there and then just go over to the other side. It was just really easy. Mm -hmm. It was shocking to me how easy it was. So what was y'all's impression of Sleeping Beauty Castle when you first saw it? Uh, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, that castle at Disney World is just amazing. And so to see the original, it was like, oh, that's really small. But <laughs> you also like appreciate the history behind it and mm-hmm. what it meant when it was starting and that it was such an iconic thing and it's still, you know, there. Um, but I do like the Disney world one better. <laughs> it is surprisingly small. I know when we went, I, I knew it was going to be small, but then I saw it. I was like, wow, it really is small. <laughs> hey parents, do your kids listen to podcasts? Do they like solving mysteries and flexing their imaginations? Mysteries at Riddleton Elementary is a new children's mystery podcast. Your kid can join Billy Bonanza and Susie Sockington on exciting and wacky adventures as they attempt to solve mysteries around their school. Mysteries at Riddleton Elementary is available now on all podcast platforms. Yeah, it felt very small cute but different but everything else you know you walk in it feels the same Mm -hmm. in so many ways um and then well but one thing that we really loved about Disneyland is that they've updated so much stuff so the rides were just smoother and it, it we were expecting to go there like it had been from the beginning, like mm-hmm. years and years ago. Like my husband said, it was his first time to Disneyland. And he said, I thought it was going to be kind of run down, you know? Um, but they had done such a great job with all their renovations that mm-hmm. it just felt clean and new and really exceeded our expectations, honestly. That's so cool. Okay, yeah. so what y'all do after Millennium Falcon? But we were determined to kind of do things close together so we wouldn't walk as much, even though we quickly realized that it was a lot smaller. Mm-hmm. You know, when I talked a couple uh, weeks ago, we were 18 to 25,000 steps a day, and it just wasn't like that there. So we just popped right over to Big Thunder Mountain. It said it was a 25-minute wait, and it was an eight-minute wait. Woo-hoo! Nice. And we all love that one. And that one, I don't know, it felt smoother than the other one um, at Disney World. And we had a lot of fun on that ride. And then we, by this time, it was kind of dinner time. So we walked out and we were like, let's just do a really quick stand dinner. So we walked by and we, the boys got turkey legs and uh, me and my daughter just got like a bunch of fruit and cheese. And it's actually very, very hot we were sweating like crazy and we just kind of sat there in the shade for 20 minutes and kind of had a little picnic dinner on the side of the road. Um, there were probably maybe five people in front of us in line at the stand. So it just felt easy mm-hmm. and we wanted to go do every single thing that we could in our limited time. Um, so right after that, we were near the jungle cruise and I don't know, did you see the movie, the new movie with the rock? I haven't seen it. It's really good, and it. Um, my mom was like, this is just like, you know, the old Jungle Cruise ride, which we had never done, so we definitely had to go do that, and that was a set. It was a 50-minute wait, and it was actually only 25, and that was just kind of relaxing to cruise around. Our guide was super funny, um, and it was so much like the movie, so if you've seen the movie, definitely go do the Jungle Cruise. We really like that. And then my kids, one of my kids' favorite things is the Haunted Mansion. And so we popped over there to that. And I didn't realize, you know, it was going to be all decorated holiday-ish. And it was awesome. It was actually the Nightmare Before Christmas. And they had done fabulous decorations that had characters out there that were dressed up like them, waving. Um, That weight. um, And you know what? I didn't write that one down. But... That was a longer line, and it went very quickly. Um, and they had it was really neat inside because it was all holiday ish mm-hmm. as well. And then I think probably around that time, we, um, you know, my oldest hadn't gotten back from band until one in the morning, and we woke him up so early that me and three of the kids said we're going to go back and crash at the hotel and get a good night's sleep so that we can go tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then my husband and Cy, who's 13, those two could survive on like an hour of sleep and Mm -hmm. be fine. And Cy kept saying, 
One of my favorite days of my entire life is when dad and I were alone at Disney World at night. And we just got to go ride everything we wanted and it was easy and we had that special time together. And so it felt really cool to be like, you guys go have your special time and the uh, sleep zombies Mm -hmm. will go rest and it all works out. So we headed back to the room and we all showered and crashed. Um, They are doing fireworks again though. So I was asleep by nine o'clock, which is, you know, technically 11 o'clock Texas time. Right. But the fireworks, you know, are literally right across the street and they woke me up. So I just kind of stood there in the window and watched the fireworks a little bit. That's so cool. Yeah, that was fun. That's cool. And then they got back really late. I think they closed the park and we had, you know, two rooms with connecting. So they were just able to come in and, and go to bed. And because of the time difference, we're like, well, let's just wake up in the morning and get going again um, because we're going to be up, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it was actually really nice because there was a Panera right next to the Marriott and we just put a mobile order in and my husband jogged down there and grabbed us breakfast and brought oatmeal and bagels and stuff like eggs up to the room. And so while everybody was kind of getting ready for the day, we were eating And we were out the door walking to the park, I think by about 7.45 in the morning, California time. Yeah, that's uh, what's nice about the time change in the morning. It works in your favor. At night, not so much, but. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we found that out too. (laughs) But it was perfect for the morning. You know, Mm -hmm. we got up, we got out the door, we walked in, even people just walking in, it still wasn't, you know, that busy. I expected it to be a lot more busy. Mm -hmm. Um, And we just walked right up and we had said, we had park hop over. We were like, this time we're going to do California adventures and do everything we want to do over there. Cause we're also big Marvel Avengers fans. And so the, all the older kids, all the kids were super excited for that. Um, So we went in. Oh, and you had given me a good tip about watching a YouTube video on how to get the virtual queue mm-hmm. for Web Slinger. And so my husband and I both watched that and then we sat there in bed and we had set alarms on our phone and we sat there in bed when the time was coming up and we were both doing it at the exact same time. And he was able to get us into the Web Slinger virtual queue. Awesome. Um, and I, I think it said, you know, 360 minutes Mm -hmm. our ride would be or something like that, but to watch it as you went on. So thanks for that tip. Um, One thing we did learn because we were trying to do that as we were traveling, you know, when we Mm -hmm. were in the airport in Vegas, we're like, let's get in the virtual queue for Rise of Resistance, but you can't get in it until you're in the park. So like we hadn't checked into the park that day. Because it, oh, for the afternoon one. I think the morning one you can do from anywhere. Yes. So in the morning, we would have been able to do that. But because we were traveling on Mm -hmm. our way, it said it it wasn't an option. And then you also can't be in two queues at the same time. Gotcha. You know, and the the queue opens at 7 a.m. and then at noon. So unless we had finished Web Slinger by noon, we wouldn't be able to get in the next queue. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. But we were like, Web Slinger's only at Disneyland. Yeah. So we definitely made that one a priority, and that ride was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's probably smarter y'all did Web Slinger, because you can only do that at one park. So you mm-hmm. can always do rides at the other park. Yeah. We were like, we'll be going to the other park again, too. Although, I mean, Sean said Disneyland's like his favorite. So we'll probably be going back to Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> So let's see, where were we? So um, so what'd y'all do first when you got to the park for that day? We kind of went over to Cars Land, which was awesome. It was just decorated so cute. And we all loved that. Um, we did the, oh, I can't remember the name of it now. I actually didn't write it down because we literally just walked in and that, but it's the little tractor one, like the tipping tractors, uh-huh. you know, and they spin you around. And we all rode that and have videos of the kids with the giant smiles. And it was just so fun to be like, oh, let's do that one and just literally walk onto the ride. Mm -hmm. Um, Because after that, we 
bit did the big race car radiator one. springs racer or something yes um and that said it was a 75 minute wait i think that was the longest wait listed of any ride we did and it was actually 55 minutes okay um but you're in the shade a lot in that one people weren't really social distancing just so everybody knows um You know, we wore our masks when we were in line and everything like that. And then the rule at Disneyland right now was that you didn't have to wear it when you were outside. But if you were inside a facility, then they required you to wear a mask and they would kindly ask you to put them on, too. But that ride was so fun. And so the six of us got to go in a car together. Uh, We were in cruise, the yellow car. And that was an amazing ride. And the scenery, I mean, it, you really feel like you're there, you know, in Radiator Springs. Yeah, that's a really fun ride. We loved that one. That's awesome. And then from there, we kind of decided we would split up a little bit because my, my kids are, I have three boys and one girl. And I have a 15-year-old and a 13-year-old boy and an 11-year-old daughter and then a four-year-old, almost five-year-old boy. And he loves cars. And so my husband was ready to chill. He doesn't love all the spinny rides. And he was like, I'll just take Jeffy and we'll go do all the Cars Land. And plus they have all the photographers out there, you know, and there weren't weren't really that many lines for that. So we ended up buying the single day photo pass. Mm -hmm. We can just scan it and get all. And that was really nice because they would take the photo And then you could just instantly have it uploaded into your app and you could download it. So we could instantly be sharing pictures with family or posting them. And so they hung out in Cars Land while we went over to like the Pixar area, Mm -hmm. which was pretty cool. It had the big Mickey Ferris wheel that just looks so cool with Mickey's face on it. And it was a beautiful day and just walking around outside and we wanted to go to the Incredula Coaster, mm-hmm. the Incredibles ride. And um, since we were all big, we were like, well, let's do the single rider. And so we hopped into that one. But I don't know what was going on. And the line didn't move like once. And oh, and I was like obsessed with starting the timer. I uh-huh. might watch it, everyone. And in 10 minutes, the line hadn't moved once for single rider. Uh-huh. So we were like, oh, shoot, let's let's go get in the regular line. Well, we should have just waited <laughs> single rider. I'm not sure what happened because then we ended up in a pretty long, it said it was 80 minutes. And I think we got on in about 35 minutes. That's not too but bad. We saw the, it wasn't bad, but then we saw the single rider right. like, cranking through. And we were like, oh shoot, we should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> and that ride, that line was pretty hot. There, there was limited shade, but we were, we were pretty hot and thirsty in that ride. So one tip that we kind of did was when you're waiting in the lines, bring your water bottle Mm -hmm. with you because there you can take it on the rides with you. And there were several times we got stuck where we were like, Oh, we want to take it in line. And then we were really thirsty. Mm -hmm. Um, And they also had, you know, the water fountains open. And so you could just refill your water bottles all day long without having to buy it. That's awesome. Did y'all like that roller coaster? My kids loved it, loved it, loved it. You know, it was the upside down one mm-hmm. and it was pretty rough to me. My 45 year old neck was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a little bit too rough for me at these days, I think. So I got <laughs> off it and I was like, yeah, I have a little bit of a headache now, but uh, <laughs> it was worth it with them. And I wish we had had a little more time to do the other Pixar stuff. There's something down there called um, Goofy's Flight School mm-hmm. or something. And that looked really fun. And we weren't able to make it over there. Um, we were like, okay, we did this area. Let's go over to the Avengers land. And we got like a, a photo pass picture there in front of that. Mm -hmm. You know, those guys were so nice. They really like take their time with everybody. And they're like, do this pose, do this. And you didn't feel rushed or like they were annoyed. They wanted you to get a great picture. So we were you know, doing black widow poses and Spider-Man poses and everything. So that, I, I really like that. And, uh, we, while we were in line for cars that morning, we put in a mobile order for the Pim's test kitchen, Mm -hmm. which I'm so glad we did. That place is so cute. And I highly recommend putting in the order or you wait 
Mm-hmm. The only problem, and I know this because half of our family is gluten free, and you can't put gluten free in on the app. Gotcha. Which is really unfortunate. So we put in half of our order, and then he was able to walk right up and get it. And then we were waiting in that line to order the gluten free stuff. And it was really, really hot. And that line moved very slowly. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of outside so we could see, like, the Avengers stuff, you know, where uh, Black Widow and uh, Winter Falcon or, you know, the Winter Soldier and everything. They were up there and they were having a big show. And that was really cool. So we were watching that. My kids really liked that. But the food at Pim's Touch Kitchen is so cute because it's, you know, everything's small but big. So there's, like, a chicken sandwich that was actually, you know, bigger than your hand, mm-hmm. but it was on a bun, like a little bitty slider. So it was adorable. That's so fun. Um, I know. I'm trying to think what we got there. Um, oh, I, my daughter and I both got the incredible, what is it? The plant-based meatballs? Mm-hmm. Uh, They're like Beyond Meat? The, yeah. It's like the different brand though that they had there. I think it's on the eye, like. Um, we got the meatballs like that. And mm-hmm. so it was served in like this giant spoon bowl. So it looked like it was small mm-hmm. and that was delicious. Um, we got the Choco peanut butter, chocolate fudge brownie kind of dessert that, mm-hmm. you know, would normally be tiny and it was enough to feed, you know, five families. It was huge, but getting a table there was a little bit hard. Um, it was starting to feel more crowded and people were getting a little grouchy because it was hot, but we got a table there, had a really nice meal there. We really enjoyed that. And then right after that is when our web slinger came up. So when your window comes up, you go there, but you still have to wait in a pretty long line. Mm-hmm. I didn't actually time that one, I guess, or I didn't write it down, but I would imagine we are probably in that line 45 to 60 minutes oh, wow. within our window. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it kind of just wound all around. Um, and then finally got into the AC and it felt really great. And that ride was, have you been that ride? No, it's new. It no. just opened this summer. Oh, I didn't even realize it was that new. That whole Avengers campus just opened. I think in oh, July well, or into June. Well, honestly, I didn't even realize that. And it's really cool. It's really well done. Um, That ride was neat because you go into like this moving kind of car case. And then they have all the directions on the wall, like how to move your hand where you're shooting webs, you know. And there was actually a mom and her son in front of us who they lived there. And she was like, the tip is to just move your arms as fast as possible. (laughs) Like, you know, you don't have to like necessarily aim. And I'm glad she told me that because when we, it was so funny, we went in there and so three of us went on one side and three on the other in this big moving cart. So our backs were kind of to each other. And then you have the big screen in front of you. And it was so cool. You know, it has the actor from Spider-Man. So Tom Holland, Uh who's adorable And he's, you know, acting something out and these spider bugs, robot spider bugs get loose and you got to go get them. And so then you're just, you know, they start coming out of the walls and it's very exciting and you're slinging your arms. And I was slinging my arms so fast. They were like, my biceps were like cramping up (laughs) and I actually got out of breath. (laughs) That's so funny. It's like a workout. (laughs) It was a total workout and I'm a little bit competitive. And so I was just going as fast as possible, but it was a really, really fun ride where these little robot spiders are coming at you and a big one. And we, my husband was with me with our youngest and we were just loving it. And I crushed everybody on the score. Like, I think they had 30,000 points. I had like over a hundred thousand. They were like, how did you do that? (laughs) Oh yeah. Like killed them. That's and I was so like, the great. tip is, just move your arms super fast. Like, <laughs> I was ser- seriously panting in that ride. <laughs> That's so great. I love it. <laughs> There's nothing better than beating your kids at a game like that. Oh, it's so satisfying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For sure. But that ride's definitely worth doing if you can get in the virtual queue. I'd 
So that one in Millennium Falcon is the one that my four year old were like, those are my very favorite rides ever. And I think all the kids said Lib Slinger was one of their top, top two. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And so after that, we were like, well, let's just walk around this area a little bit. We wanted to go do the Guardians of the Galaxy, mm-hmm. which is the, you know, is the old Tower of Terror. What we didn't know, which I wish we had known, is that half of the day, like the morning, is Guardians of the Galaxy themed. And then at two o'clock, they close it for an hour. Of course, we show up at like 159. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, it's closed for an hour. We're setting up for Monsters After Dark. Um, and that was the theme for the evening. Mm-hmm. So I wish I had realized that because we would have made sure we got over there in the morning and the evening. Right. And there were a bunch of signs out that said, this may be frightening to children. And uh, so then we're like, oh, no, we're not sure if he should go on that one. But he really wanted to. And so we were like, well, we got to walk around for a little bit. So we just kind of were exploring the area and we were walking by and there was a um, Philharmonic 3D show going on. And we were like, oh, that's like a music thing. And, you know, it's in air conditioning. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go in there and just sit for 10, 15 minutes. And I'm so glad we did because it was so cute. It was like old school kind of Fantasia, you know. Donald Duck screws up and Mickey's mad at him and he's messing up his orchestra, but like flutes are flying out in the audience and, you know, the kids are reaching for him 3d and actually I think it was 40, like some water splashed up on our face. That's Um, fun. But it just felt really good to sit in there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think you get in that, go, go, go. We got to go do everything. But then you miss something like that, that is going to be, a great memory. You know what I mean? Yes. You just need to slow down. No one can ever do everything when they go to the park. So you just got to realize that and just relax and have fun. Right. Yeah. So that's a good tip to give people is, you know, when you see something like that, slow down, Mm -hmm. slow down and enjoy the moment. Don't feel like you have to check everything off. We always say you always have to leave something to come back for, you know? Yep. And so I'm glad we did that. And then by the time that was over and we kind of wandered a little bit, um, we walked back to get in line for the Guardians of the Galaxy, which was already kind of spreading down the street. Mm -hmm. And we were also, you know, Sean, my husband, he was like, I don't like those droppy rides. And I said, you have to do it because I didn't want to do Tower of Terror last time we went to Disney World. And it ended up being one of my favorite rides. You know, Mm -hmm. it's different. And, but the signs are kind of freaking us out a little bit. And there's a little bit of the animatronic stuff inside that we were like, oh no, is this going to be scary? Um, but it was also nice because he was like clutching our hand, you know, he's like, no, I'm going to do it. And he had got one of those little magnet groots has like a little magnet plate and he can kind of sit on your shirt, you Mm -hmm. know, you slide the magnet in your shirt. And so he had a group sitting on his shoulder, kind of walking through and the monsters after dark is all about Groot and Groot's been captured and you got to go save him. And he's in this big warehouse and these monsters are going to come out. And so we walked in there and there was like a big Yeti up in there. And my four year old was like, I know it's not real. I know that's not real. Cause it's not moving. <laughs> <laughs> Very smart. Yes. So then we got on the ride and um, me and my four-year-old and my 15-year-old sat together and he was holding our hands, you know, and it was, it was not scary. Like the show in it, I was expecting a lot worse and Mm -hmm. it was just enjoyable. I mean, there was like one little monster, but there were other little kids on it, you Mm know? Um, So I'm really glad we took him because we were holding his hands and as it would drop, he was just like floating midair hanging on to us and he thought that ride was incredible and all of my kids said that was one of their top two favorite rides that's so fun I love droppy rides well I think the Tower of Terror the Galaxy ride is one of my favorites now and it was something I wasn't gonna do see it's so good to try new things especially 
when you don't know if you're going to get a chance to go back soon. You might as well just do it. Right. Yes. And all those rides, like that one said it was an 80 minute ride and it was 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. So there, I hope they continue to add some more stuff into the Avengers area because that was kind of all it was, Mm -hmm. even though it was awesome. It would be cool if they keep adding more in there. Yeah, for sure. Um, Because after we did that, we were like, well, let's just head over to back to Disneyland because we wanted to do more of those rides that we didn't do the day prior. And so as we were walking, my husband put the uh, mobile order in for the Dole Whip, which is a must do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we went and did that and got a seat. And those are so good and we refreshing and cold and you can take a little break and it kind of gets you to power through for the rest of the afternoon. Um, and use the mobile order. It's, you will definitely save some time in doing oh, yeah. that. For sure. So then there, let's see, we split up and Sean took Jeffy over to do the race car one. Autopia? I think it's called Autopia. Yes, yeah. That's it. Autopia. Um, and they had a blast on that one. And we were, me and the big kids were like, okay, I, I really wanted to do Matterhorn. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of iconic Disneyland. Right. And so we were like, let's do the single rider. Well, I didn't realize that the single rider actually split into two sides, um, that there's two different racetracks at modern Matterhorn. And I guess they're a little bit different rides. And so they were like, okay, you two go there. So me and my 13 year old were, you know, in line and we went to the right and I was expecting my other two to come right behind me. And then they were like, you go over there. And I was like, oh no, now we're like separated, Mm -hmm. which gave me a little bit of anxiety. I could see them kind of going through the line. I knew my daughter was with my 15 year old and she would be fine. And, you know, you just feel so safe at Disneyland, Mm -hmm. but I still didn't really like knowing that I was separated from her. Right. You know? Um, and then our line ended up going way faster than their line. And so Cy and I got on and he was, he's like a roller coaster maniac. He was so happy. Um, and that ride was very rough. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, and no. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. I yeah. thought I was gonna love it, and it was like old school, rough, jerky around every curb. It's very rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I will never do that one again. <laughs> but I'm glad I did it. Yeah, there you go. And then we got off of that one, and he and I probably ended up waiting ten to fifteen minutes for the other two oh, to wow. come through, and they actually exit at a different area too. So we had to kind of walk around a little bit to make sure we saw where Mm -hmm. they came out. Um, So I think we did go a lot faster. That line said it was about a 30 minute wait and the single rider was 12 minutes. Oh, wow. That's really, yeah, that's a pretty big difference. And that's good to know that the single rider lane splits for people going because I didn't, I didn't know that. I had no idea. So yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. If I had known that, I would have put my daughter with me. And well, you probably the boys. Yeah, you probably could have told the cast member too, like, "Oh, we want to stay together," and they might have let y'all. Yeah, and I had no idea. Yeah. I was just like, "I'm gonna go on the first one, so that I'm the first person mm-hmm. out, so that I can be waiting for them to come out versus them waiting for me." Right. So then I went off to the right, and then they sent them the other way, and I was like, "No." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But they like that one, but then they were all about Space Mountain. Like, they love Space Mountain. And I was like, I don't want to do Space Mountain. Like, I don't really like it at Disney World. It made me nauseous. Um, It was kind of jerky. And Cy had written it the night before with Sean, and he was like, no, this one's different. You have to come do it. And actually, when my oldest had COVID, we had been watching a bunch of the stuff on Disney Plus and the... Imagineer show and there's a whole little documentary about Space Mountain mm-hmm. and so you know as he was watching it I'm in the kitchen going <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be writing that in a few weeks <laughs> but he was just watching it because it was interesting and we learned that they took everything out of Space Mountain 
like bolt by bolt. And they took it out and they redid it and they talked about how fun it was to update it with the music and the props in there, and like, a, like a real life spaceship and the smooth rails and everything. And so that ride was, it ended up being one of my favorites. And again, I wasn't going to do it, you know, mm-hmm. because they, they are different at the different parks. Um, so that one said it was a 45 minute wait. And about half of that is outside, and we waited 40 minutes Mm -hmm. on that one. Um, But then it was really neat because it's a double rider, Mm -hmm. you know, like two people sit next to each other, versus at Disney World, that's a single rider. Um, Because they had, because it's smaller at Disneyland, they made the ride a little bit wider so they could get more people through it. Mm Mm-hmm. And then the scenery was different and that it felt like you were literally just like flying smoothly through the stars. That's so cool. You know, it was really, really neat. We ended up doing that one several times, all of us. That's fun. <clears throat> yeah. And then on one of the, one of the times when we did that one, um, the kids got in their mind that they were going to tell Jeffy, the four year old that, we were moving to the moon and it was actually one of our surprises, like how we surprised them bringing them to Disneyland that the next surprise was that all our stuff was being shipped up and that like my parents were already at the moon and they were waiting for us. And so the whole time he like thought we were really going in a rocket ship and we were about to blast off and they were saying, yeah. And he was like, well, what about school? And they're like, we're going to go to moon school. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is so funny. So he really thought that. And then when we came out at the end of the ride, he was like, where are the stars? <laughs> like, he thought we were going to be on the moon. <laughs> Aw, poor Jeffy. What you give for being the baby of the family? <laughs> <laughs> Making memories. <laughs> That's so funny. Aw, they're going to, like, remind him of that forever. Remember when you I thought know. we were moving to the moon? <laughs> Yeah, it's so fun. Oh my god, it's fun about making sure you take those family vacations. You yep. know that you can have those kind of memories. Absolutely. Let's see. Where do we go from there? Um, oh, so we were like, we have to do the stuff that's at Disneyland only, mm-hmm. since we've never been. So we're like, what is Mr. Toad's Wild Ride? Like, I'm still not sure, but yeah. we walked over there to it. And it's one of those fun little kitty rides that you ride through, kind of like the Pooh Bear honey one, you know? And we get on it, and um, and they had been fighting over who was going to ride with Jeffy. They all want to ride with him on all the rides. And so then when we came up, the guy was like, well, an adult has to be with him. So, like, I jumped in, and then I was, like, you know, making faces at them. Like, I got him. Ha, ha, I finally got to ride with him. But then I was so confused on the whole ride. It's very strange and it like tells a story and we had to look it up and it's a little bit dark. So go Google it. Um, But my teen was like obsessed with it. And he was like, I want to go ride that ride over and over and figure out what it is all about. Like that was one of his favorite rides because he, it was so different and quirky and dark than Uh your stereotypical Disney stuff. Um, So that was fun. And that was when we it was like a 10 minute wait to go ride that one yeah that's like one of those things from like the 50s that they thought were like kid appropriate uh yeah we were like um yeah i think some bad stuff happened yeah on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny when we took our kids on that they were like running out of that screaming i never want to do that again Why'd you make me do that? I was like, because we have to do all the original rides. They're like, no, we don't. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They were kind of like, we need to go ride that again and see what story was actually being played on the walls. (laughs) That's so funny. I love it. Yeah. So then we were like, well, now we have to go do Pinocchio because that's an old school one. Mm -hmm. and It's right there by it. And that was a 12 minute wait. And that was kind of the same Like, I was like, yeah, it's kind of cool to have the old stuff in there, but I don't know. I didn't really like that one that much. Mm -hmm. Um, Then we went over to the Buzz Lightyear one that's kind of over by uh, Space Mountain Mm -hmm. area. 
and that's the fun little shooty one, you know, that you ride around in and score points and we get all competitive again. And that one said it was, I think I said it was a 10 minute ride wait. And when I started my timer and then I forgot to stop it until we actually came out, we were in line, did the whole ride and came out and it was nine minutes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty much, you just walk on, yeah. have awesome fun, walk off. Well, then we like did it again. Yeah. You know, I mean, we why just not? Walk through it. Yeah. And then the kids were like, well, we won't want to go again. And I had been wanting to shop and we hadn't really had a lot of time. And so for the very first time, we let the four of them go do a ride just all on their own, you know, and they're all responsible and look out after the little one. Mm-hmm. And you have to be 14 to ride with a younger kid. Mm-hmm. So my 15 year old was totally fine riding with him. And so we were like, wow, this feels like a whole new world. Like this could be fun coming back and being like, okay, go have your fun. And we're going to go have some fun too. Mm -hmm. And we were literally like right just across the way and went into the awesome star Wars store, which is at the exit of space mountain. And they had really cool stuff. And then I finally got my little bag backpack that I had been admiring I got a Star Wars one of that. So I was really happy to get that. You know, we're about to leave the park and I finally get my little backpack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you got it. I know. And I can carry it at home and it makes me smile every time I see it. That's awesome. Got the little Star Wars characters on it. So let's see. After that, we were like, well, we really need to eat. And so we put a mobile order in and did the Bengal barbecue which is over near Jungle Cruise, the Dole Whip area, the Indiana Jones. And that was delicious. So if you're looking for some good food, um, the menu was accurate, you know, as we scanned through everything to see what we wanted. And we all really enjoyed it. It was like skewers, like Mm -hmm. teriyaki chicken skewers and beef skewers. And they had like a sticky rice with this delicious sauce on it and pineapple spears and stuff like that. So we had a little kind of picnic dinner and we all really enjoyed that. Um, and then we split up again so that I, you said Indiana Jones was one of your favorite rides. So I was like, I have to ride this. And so me and the big kids went in the Indiana Jones line. And by this time it was dark. I I can't, I can't remember what they went to go do. Um, it said it was 25 minutes and we actually waited 27 minutes. Um, and we did that one. Oh, Sean and Jeffy went to Splash Mountain, <laughs> which, you know, there's no seatbelts or anything on yeah. that ride. And he's little, but he's and that's tall a big enough drop. to do it. Yeah. So I need to send you the picture of his eyeballs. Like they're <laughs> huge going down the drop. And the guy told Sean, well, just put your arms around his waist and hang on to them. And we were like, oh, that doesn't feel like very modern, you know? <laughs> That's like what, when we were growing up as kids, it's like, let's just hang on to your kid. Right. But, uh, so as we came off Indiana Jones, which was super fun, we went and met up with them and they were literally walking off Splash Mountain and he was soaking wet, like completely wet and it's dark and and he's like shaking, he's getting chilly. So fortunately I brought a whole extra set of clothes for him and a Ziploc bag. And uh, we just pulled him out, you know, right there by the shoulder in the dark and everybody got around and we changed him really fast. If if we hadn't had that, we would have had to go buy all new clothes or leave the park because oh he was gosh. completely <laughs> wet. And he was like, I don't ever want to do that one again. <laughs> Poor Jeffy. That's hard. <laughs> He's um. such a trooper. But then, you know, he didn't want to stop. We were mm-hmm. kind of like, well... It's, you know, by this time, it's probably nine o'clock our time, Mm -hmm. which is, uh, or their time, which is like 11 o'clock our time. And he was like, let's keep going. We're like, we're here. We're only here for a day and a half. Let's just go. And Monday was a holiday. It was our travel day. So we're like, we can rest tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we hadn't done the Pooh Bear one yet. So we had to go do Pooh Bear. And that one was the same inside, just like a different carrier cart that Mm -hmm. took you through. Um, but that one we just love. It's so sweet. And then he finally got his big rainbow lollipop. You know, that's one thing he remembered from Disney world when he was two. He's like, I want to get one of those big lollipops. 
So they had their little treats. They have a real cute little snack bar in there with um, the marshmallows with the Mm -hmm. sprinkles and the candy apples and everything like that. So that was a fun little shop uh, right there by Pooh Bear. And then we came out of there and we, and you know, the four year old starts chanting space mountain, space mountain. (laughs) (laughs) We're all just looking at each other and laughing and we're like, well, if he's still going, let's go. Yep. So we go get back in line. We walk over there. That's kind of near the, you know, entrance too. So we're like, that'll be a good last thing to do. Mm -hmm. And we get in line and it said 35 minute wait and it was 29 minutes. So pretty accurate. And several times, actually, during the park, somebody would hand us those little red cards on a lanyard that said, hand this to the person at the end of the line. It's how we time the lines. Mm -hmm. And so several times we ended up with one of those. So they were trying to time it, you know, accurately in the app. That's awesome. Uh, So we waited in Space Mountain and we were getting pretty tired by that point. I think it was probably 1045 California time and the Mm -hmm. park closed at 11. So we rode space mountain one more time and I had this fear. I wasn't going to like it as much. And I loved it just as much. You know, it was kind of the perfect way to end the trip Mm -hmm. and then put the little guy on our back and he was still doing great. And then we just were like, Oh, it's so easy. We don't have to wait for anything. We just walk out the gate and walk, you know, about two blocks down to the hotel Um, and so we did that and then I said, okay, take your showers and put your clothes on what you're going to do, what you're going to wear in the morning, because our shuttle was actually, we had to wake them up, I think at five, five thirty, five forty five in the morning to catch our shuttle, um, in order to get a direct flight back to Austin. And so they, I literally, you know, just woke them up in their clothes and kind of carried, walked them out. We'd Mm -hmm. packed up and caught that shuttle, which was really convenient to be, be able to get to the airport like that. It was just our family in the shuttle. So yeah, that was a whirlwind trip. Ideally a whole nother day would have been great there. We did feel a little rush on Mm -hmm. that 8am to 11pm day, which was crazy that long, but we did feel a little rush because we were like, we got to do all the Disneyland stuff. Yeah. But, Y'all did a lot, though, especially because I would have thought it'd be harder to do things on a holiday weekend. I would have thought it would have been more busy. Like, how did you feel the crowds were? So much. I would say the majority of the time, you felt pretty spread out. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the lines were going so quickly, we were like, gosh, this is amazing. There were several area of the parks that were a little bit tighter, you know, the walkways, kind of thinking like Indiana Jones, that area where it was shoulder to shoulder yeah. with a lot of people walking through. And that's mm-hmm. when it felt kind of crowded. But overall, I didn't think it felt that crowded. Um, our shuttle driver in the morning said that someone, another lady had taken to the airport, said she comes every single Labor Day weekend. And that she felt this was the most crowded it had been in years. Oh, wow. But but he was also kind of like, well, really? I doubt it because it's still COVID. Right. So not everybody's out. And that, you know, I'd never been to Disneyland, but it was not, it was not bad crowded at mm-hmm. all. Even those couple of moments when we were packed in with people, um, you just keep walking and then you're in open space and it didn't feel it felt less crowded than every, pretty much every time we've been to Disney World. That's really cool. And that's good to know, too, yeah, for anyone thinking of maybe going on a holiday weekend. It might not be as bad as you think. Right, right. It was definitely worth it. We're so glad that we just did a quick trip, you know, and we would do that again. An extra day would have been nice. Two and a half days, I think, would be really awesome there. One and a half days was doable, but a little rushed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I see that. We did one and a half days, too. And, yeah. I mean, it's definitely doable. Like, if that's what you got, do it. Right. Yeah. So, right. what was y'all's least favorite moment of the trip? Oh, gosh. I don't... I mean, nothing springs to mind, you know? I'm not like, oh, that was awful, or that could have been a lot better. Like, everything was just... 
was just fun. That's you know, awesome. I mean, the, the Radiator Springs line was pretty long, mm-hmm. but compared to what it could be otherwise, you know? Well, and sometimes... I can't really think of anything. <laughs> that's awesome. And sometimes I've always, like, if the ride is so great, you, like, forget about how long you stood in line. You know, like, yeah. the line doesn't matter if the ride is really great. But if you stand in line for a really long time and the ride is meh, then you're kind of like, oh, I just wasted all that time. Right. Whereas on all of these, you're like, well, that was worth it. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. I guess if I had to pick something, I would probably say um, not being able to order the gluten-free in the app where we mm-hmm. had to stand in the normal line. Yeah. Because that normal line at PIMS was straight out in the sun and you're right there at lunchtime. And it took a really long time. And we we're like, oh, man, we could have just put that in and had it like the other half of our family. Yeah. That's something they probably need to work on. Mm-hmm. What was your greatest moment? Oh, so many. Um, the moment we just started when we woke them up, you know, and then being like, what are we doing? And them guessing the whole time having a surprise trip was so fun. And I personally don't like surprises but they do. And so to do that for them and have everything planned out and you don't have to plan as much going to Disneyland as you do to Disney world, which was kind of stressing me out beforehand. Like I was like, well, I don't know where we're going and when and what we're eating and reservations and everything, but really you just kind of show up and go and mm-hmm. it was just easy. So I think the fact that it was just really easy to get in and out of the park was a huge plus having the park hopper with two parks right next to each other. So we could be like, well, we did everything over here. Now it's not a big deal to just pop right across the way. Mm-hmm. Um, we really liked the Avengers stuff. We love, everybody loved web slingers. Everybody loved the guardians of the galaxy. I think we said, if we had a little more time, we'd spend more time in the star Wars area. Um, And then riding the Disneyland only rides was really special and kind of having my eyes open to the renovations with Space Mountain and how I kind of fell in love with that ride Mm -hmm. and how excited, you know, all the kids were about that. That's great. So do y'all have a, like another Disney trip planned or do you have an idea when you might do another Disney vacation? I don't know. There's so many trips that we want to take. You know, we want to go overseas and do England and Scotland and everything like that. But then even watching the Disney t- Channel stuff, you know, maybe we do Disney Paris, you know, when we go that way. Um, we definitely, well, actually, my teen is going to Disney World with the band for spring break. And, but he said we're not allowed to come. <laughs> oh man, I, like, I would say no. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to chaperone kids to go on a trip. Like I want to go have fun. Yeah, you know, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> and then you know, I've had several friends do the Disney in Hawaii. So I would love to kind of learn more about that and see if that's worth doing. That is a Disney experience. Mm-hmm. You just did a podcast on that, right? No, I'm going to be recording next weekend. So, yeah, stay tuned. I will be listening in. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully we get lots of good information. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Eve. I always love talking to you, especially about Disney, all things Disney. I know. Maybe we should be planning some more trips and uh, learning from all your awesome guests. Yes, I say let's do that. I hope you enjoyed this show today. I was so excited to talk to Eve and do my very first Disneyland episode. Check out our Instagram at Disney Travel Tales to see pictures of Eve and her family on their surprise special Disneyland trip. You can also keep updated with anything that's going on with the show. 
We will be back next week with a new episode. Until then, this is Jenny, and may all your Disney travel dreams become a reality.